I'm stuck on it. Uh, and the TIF district, and I'm going to turn it over to the town manager for an introduction. Thank you. Uh, for the past several weeks, or actually several months, uh, we've really been totally uh, in enthralled with the whole credit enhancement uh, agreement discussion and you know, what rate of reimbursement and for what reasons to the developer. Uh, at the same time, we, we really should have been talking about uh, the other portion right. of the underlying TIF, and there are similar decisions the town needs to make on its own behalf for its own reasons. So we'd like to engage you in a conversation around um, that aspect of the conversation, really relative to the TIF district. And in my mind, there's really kind of two fundamental questions that I'd like to get through uh, for some guidance tonight so we can finalize some documents. Beyond that, we're, we're certainly uh, expect there'll be some other conversation that will stray in different directions. We'll do our best to, to answer your questions. But really, those fundamental questions in my mind are, uh, what do we want to do with our portion of uh, TIF revenues, uh, if anything? And we really need to be specific in terms of identifying which projects we'd like to fund uh, using those TIF revenues. And then there's another uh, nuance, but I think a really important nuance in terms of we get to choose which, uh, well, the statute advises what the baseline value is, and, and that's really important um, uh, part of the uh, discussion because that's the, the increment is built from that baseline. What's happened in the inter intervening uh, months is we've done a commercial industrial revaluation that has an effect on those values. So there is an opportunity to um, certainly comply with statute first and foremost, but also uh, designate there's a different value we, used to, we used to wish to use for purposes of calculating the increment. And that's a discussion I'd like to get some feedback on. Uh, Shauna, our attorney is here to help guide us through that discussion and others. Um, so with that, I did provide a couple of baseline documents just to kind of guide the discussion. Um, for lack of anything else, frankly, I, I took a, a piece out of the actual DCD application uh, titled the development program and adapted it slightly. But essentially, uh, this is the section where we need to designate uh, what we'd like to do with our portion of the TIF proceeds. And I've got a proposal here, but maybe I'll stop there and we can continue on. So uh, in the materials that were posted, uh, the town manager has given us uh, a recommendation uh, as to the first question, uh, and that is uh, uh, what portion of the TIF revenues uh, do we want to segregate uh, uh, in a reserve fund for uh, uh, downtown TIF development projects? Uh, why don't we start, because I think people have questions that they might want to be able to ask uh, attorney Mueller or the town manager or Karen Martin, the director of SEDCO. And so that way we can, uh, and then after we've sort of got the questions out of the way, uh, I'm going to ask everyone to go around and based on having reviewed the town manager's recommendation, uh, uh, provide their viewpoint on where they think we ought to be vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Money's set aside. So, questions from the town council, Mr. Rowan. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I had a question um, in the development program. 
Um, there are some specific numbers that are put in there. For instance, it says first the town expects to capture three percent increased assessed value on the entire district. Mm -hmm. Was that just a placeholder? Is that based on something? And if so, what? I'm afraid I missed it. That, that's my recommendation, and then yeah. I go on to describe what the allowed mm -hmm. uses would be for. Got it. So, so the the three percent comes from your recommendation. Yes, that's okay. and so. Uh, the 97 percent that is left uh, goes where? It would flow to the general fund. It would not be sheltered. It would not be segregated out uh, for specific use. Uh, it would just go to the general fund. Right. Except with respect to the Scarborough Downs. Exactly. So that the, the uh, a certain portion of that money would go to the Scarborough Downs people as a part of the t the credit, credit enhancement fund. agreement. Mm -hmm. uh, and the rest would remain as general funds. Right. Important clarification. We're talking about those monies outside of what we're considering flowing back to the developer through the credit enhancement agreement. Right. Can I ask a follow-up? Is, is there an opportunity to have a different um, capture percentage Absolutely. In, in different parts of the district? So we, we could say, uh, you know, inside the, the downs area would be something different than outside. Yes, you can do that. To what end, I would ask? Um, <clears throat> well, so as that area is getting redeveloped, the, my expectation is that its valuation is going to increase, increase much faster, or considerably faster, and there might be, um, you know, we, we, might, we might just want to think about the, those monies differently. Mm -hmm. That's good, right? Um, this is uh, for our attorney. Um, this, what we lock in today, so to speak, or whenever, um, that can be changed at any point, though, right? Future councils may decide that they want a different percentage mix, is my first question. And then my second question, and this can go to whomever is best able to answer it, is um, the money that goes to the general fund. Uh, I know we're minimum receivers with school, so that's why at this point, you know, we don't get anything from sheltering a whole lot other than municipal revenue sharing, is that correct? And, and other things, yeah, uh, like that. Um, but at some point, if school needs changed or formula changed, we can change the formula. So I guess my overall question, overarching question is, <clears throat> this is right now. This can be changed in future by future councils. That's correct. So an amendment process to the development program includes the same process that we go through under the statute for designating a TIF district and adopting the initial development program. So you just you'd need to have a public hearing and have a council vote to approve an amendment. That amendment could increase or decrease the percentage of captured value. It could amend the project list. So you will have an opportunity to revisit this as circumstances change. Um, and one of those potential circumstances might be that your minimum receiver status changes mm -hmm. and your tax shift impact related to captured funds changes. Mm -hmm. That might provide you with an incentive to capture more. So that's um, a valid point. Okay. So if we're not going to really have much projected uh, uh, net revenue in the first five years, since there's no development out there at all. Does that mean that when we get, oh, five to 10 years out, and there's actually some money to, to consider, that we would be able to change the purposes for which that money uh, is being set aside? That's right, you can modify the project cost list, which um, would take the form of this table that you've seen in, in um, the materials from the town manager, so long as those projects are consistent with the TIF statutory guidelines at that time. So the TIF statutory guidelines, since this is a downtown TIF, uh, it, it's you have to have it relate to the activity that's going on within that geographic area? Not necessarily, and, and this goes back to a presentation I gave to you all probably more than six months or so ago, but the TIF statute lays out your potential project costs in a development program into three categories. One is projects that are located inside the TIF district, and those are 
they're the most flexible uses are for projects that are located in your district. So most of the projects you see are, are related to that, um, that kind of category. There's a second category um, that is projects that may or may not be located in the TIF district, but are what's called directly related to mm -hmm. or made necessary by the district development. So if you have infrastructure that has to be improved because of development inside the district, but that infrastructure is located outside, that's the kind of thing that is in that category. And then under the TIF statute, there is a third category, which um, really are deemed to be general economic development expenditures, and those do not have to relate to this particular TIF district. Some examples um, include um, staff time of your municipal officials who are devoted to economic development activities generally. Um, there, there are a laundry list of other categories there, too. So that, that's a fairly flexible list, but it's, um, it doesn't have to relate to the TIF district geography. Ge geography. Good, thank you. I think I think all of us are concerned. How critical is it to make a decision tonight when we really won't have money for five to ten years at, at, at a size or a, a, an amount that allows us to actually make an intelligent decision as to using it? So I think that helps. Just if I could, as a practical matter, just the way this would work, we would designate a certain percentage to flow toward this fund. The money accumulates in that fund and could only be used for those qualified purposes. So to your point, it would presumably, you know, it would build over time and at some point in the future get to the point that we could actually do something with it. Uh, the way we would do something with it is through the annual budget process, whether it's through uh, capital projects and the capital uh, budget or to the extent that we want to support ongoing, already existing expenses for economic development initiatives, it could come in to the uh, general fund um, to help offset expenses we're already covering. So we would, there's a, a protection I want to share with you, and we heard concerns from the public that who's going to decide and when are you going to decide how to use the monies? I would suggest we do it through the annual budget process so it's subject to the same rigors mm -hmm. and scrutiny as everything else. And the, the only caveat to that is that once you have designated funds um, from the TIF district to be TIF revenues in a year and they start to accumulate there, you can't later take those revenues and put them in your general fund. Right. Um, so th that's the, the caveat. Peter. To, sort of a, going way back to the 30,000 mile view, but can we talk a little bit of how we describe the footprint we have up here? What was the rationale? Two, does it, as you look at the footprint, we've carved out a lot of the residential districts along the Route 1 corridor, except for the residential that's within Scarborough Downs, which will be part of the TIF. Is that, is that, is there any reason for that? Does that create us any issues? Similar to the question that Councillor Katarina asked, it, we can change the percentages going forward. Can you change the footprint of the designated mm -hmm. district going forward? You can. So, okay, so Karen, do you want to sure. take a crack at Peter's question? Absolutely. Um, so what we did, um, because we, we wanted to blend Oak Hill with the Downs, and so what we did is we took the areas within Oak Hill that were zoned town and village center mm -hmm. and town and village center two. And mm -hmm. that was the, the first crack at this. The one thing that has evolved since we first started looking at that Oh, and I'm sorry, and there's a the section of B3 that's along Route 1 that's really connecting those pieces. So the TVC zones are generally this area? Mm -hmm. Correct. The one TVC and TVC2. It's TV. Oh, okay. oh, and then the, the B3 are down in here uh, on the Route 1 corridor. Right. And we thought that was the most genuine um, since we had rezoned this area to meet the, the town and village center um, you know, we developed that category for our village centers. Um, it made the most sense to speak of that in terms of um, what you would include in a downtown area. Um, again, there's a little section of uh, B3 along Route 1 that's really a, a connector. Um, and then we, we grabbed all of Scarborough Downs. Originally, I think we've talked a lot about do you split it up? Do you do other things? But we, we did carve off about 58. That's years, true. Because it's already in an existing TIF district, the HP district. Right. 
Right. Um, so that's the origin of those uh, of how we came about doing that. The uh, the one thing that did change um, really this week is there's. I think we cut back a little. There's a little section of. Um, yeah, there's a couple here that reach into the Hillcrest development, uh, state manufactured homes, and there's a couple of lots that are bisected uh, by zone boundaries. Mm -hmm. So we, for simplicity, uh, we isolated by parcels. So we went by property boundary, but generally speaking, it follows, <coughs> intends to follow those two uh, zone districts. Right. And part of the reason we didn't grab the residential neighborhoods um, were because we, we were primarily concerned with the, the business development side of things, the, the um, true economic development picture, at least on the Oak Hill side. Um, and then it was an attempt to really cut down on the acres because we knew that we were growing the zone fairly um, significantly. And we, we didn't anticipate sig significant redevelopment in the residential areas. So we left those out. I guess the last point, and this is an issue the staff grappled with, is whether we include the municipal school campus, which is mm -hmm. 165 acres here, and Karen won that discussion. Um, <laughs> so I uh, win so few. <laughs> but to your point, you know, we could very well consume this area too and make it more right. conti contiguous, if you will. Um, that, that's an option. We, we're not limited by, uh, by acreage, uh, whereas other TIF designations have limitations, the downtown one does not. But and for me, including the municipal campus, you're talking about the downtown area. It just, for me, it made sense to have a contiguous, um, uh, really look at the downtown area. And we described the district really as two areas flanking the municipal campus with the municipal mm -hmm. campus in the, in the center. Good. So I, I don't know if I, I didn't sure. hear the question to one of, Pete, I think, Pete, you asked, um, so can the boundaries be changed, either increase mm -hmm. or decrease? So they can be through an amendment process in the future. Okay. The only caveat is that to the extent the council, the town, has entered into credit enhancement agreements, obviously right. then you'd be violating a contractual agreement if you were to change those boundaries. So um, you shouldn't do that. But right. Okay. But otherwise. That, that would, so that if we did not modify or or reduce the size of the Scarborough Downs <coughs> property that uh, was uh, covered by a credit enhancement agreement. And as long as we don't do that, then we could modify anything else. Um, there's a couple more points worth making in that uh, on that topic. One is that because this is a downtown TIF district, we do need the district to meet the definition of downtown in the TIF right. statute. So you couldn't change this to such a large degree that it doesn't contain the social economic center of the municipality. I don't have that definition memorized, but it's along those lines. Um, so, so that's one thing to consider. The other piece that's just worth knowing, thinking about amendments that relate to district acreage, is that to the extent the town later adds district acreage, you don't get the benefit of the starting value that dates back to the original district designation. You have to start the, the captured value at the time of that amendment, or mm -hmm. related to that amendment. Okay. So you kind of have a bifurcated starting yeah. value. So, sorry, if I Chris, could... follow up on that quick question. So that's, you don't have to adjust the entire TIF zone, just the area that you add. Correct. Correct? Okay. So, well, if I could, does that mean that were we to then change this 3% sometime in the future, 10 years in the future, to some larger percentage, we would essentially be going back to the original baseline value that we would then be, they'd be sheltered, or would they, would that amendment also restart the clock from evaluation? When I talk about changing the original assessed value date, that only relates to the circumstance where the town expands the district boundaries and to the extent it, and for that property that's added. Um, if you are only changing the capture rate, say from three to 5%, um, you're talking about the increased assessed value from that original starting valuation. What would happen in that scenario, assuming they're, they're at the time of the amendment that there wasn't a change in the increased assessed value at that date, is that to the, that two percent used to go to the general fund, and now you're putting it to the general fund. Right. But you see would, what I mean? Yes, and, and then for that year and years forward, it would be sheltered from the calculation right. for um, state revenue right. share and county tax. That's right. Or and, and schools. Schools. Presumably, presumably Chris and Peter. 
Um, so, um, a couple of quick questions. So, we can expand the list of projects anytime. So, I I saw the list as two options on there, which I appreciate, but uh, there's a plethora of other things that I've heard from other committees that would like mm. some attention. Okay. Um, so, uh, just so I'm clear, that, that list can be expanded without needing to amend, or we would still have to go through the amendment process with the state? We would still need to go through the amendment process with the state, which okay. requires by statute a public hearing, council vote, and then um, state review for statutory compliance. Uh, so my follow, I got a couple follow-ups here. Sorry, how cumbersome is that process for the state? Is uh, are they known to be? I mean, are they typically restrictive? Is it fairly open, as long as it's not you know too prohibitive or within the bounds of the original TIF? If I'm concerned that it might not pass muster, I'm going to ask them ahead of time for mm -hmm. the town. Uh, What's the what? And I know it's no predictor of the future. How cumbersome has the state been in the past to modify these? Are they generally open to that, or is it? they prefer not to keep going back and amending this process? Um, it's the town's legal authority to decide to amend or not. So they process the applications just like original district applications. But they have approval authority, right? Or do they not have approval? Their, statutory compliance. Their review and authority is only limited to, to mm -hmm. statutory compliance. Okay. They can't tell you it's a good or bad idea. Okay. Two so, more. Two, sorry. So, 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 so if, just yeah. if you're adding transit to a transportation uh, that was in there originally uh, uh, for the district itself. So you, it's, fo it's focused on the district. There's no statutory compliance problem would there be with that kind of modification as opposed to something that says let's use the money for something on the other side of town totally unrelated. Well it really depends on what the thing is. If, if the that third category that doesn't have to relate to the TIF district, if you've got some project you want to add that's squarely within that category, then there's no problem with that, that idea either. Um, so it really depends. So, so last two, I promise, until I have others. <laughs> uh, dur <laughs> duration of the extension. So if we establish this now, the clock starts ticking, we have 20 years or 30? 30. 30. 30 years. We expand, to, we expand the geography. The geography expansion falls, the limitation is at the end of the 30 years of the original TIF, or does that extension now have a 30 year lifespan? You are limited to the 30 years from the original designation date. And okay. I have had clients before municipalities decide that they wanted to, instead of expanding the geographic boundaries of an original district, do a new TIF district for that purpose because there's new development in that area that they want to capture for the full 30 years from that date. But we are limited to uh, the number of downtown TIF districts we can have? I have, I've never seen a town have more than one downtown okay. or downtown TIF district. So, so if I we were like to expand it, let's say, to... Dunstan. Not to Dunstan. I'm thinking in some of the areas that aren't in red. Um, and we, if we were create, a, if we were to create a secondary TIF district for that, it could not be a downtown TIF, Correct. which would mean it would have to have different restrictions and covenants for it. That would be. Uh, so presumably, if you expanded it, it wouldn't be as large as this district is. So mm -hmm. the limitations on acreage and valuation, we probably wouldn't have a problem with. But no, I was thinking. I'm sorry. I, sorry, I meant we could not create a second downtown TIF district. It would have to fall under a different type of TIF. Yeah, Correct. I mean, there's a, there is a sort of catch-all <clears throat> regular TIF district. So it's right. not like you have to qualify for a special type. No, but the downtown TIF district has certain benefits that we're trying to, to recover or receive, right? That's right. Okay. So once this, last question. Well, once this, <laughs> once this, until I have another one. Once this TIF district expires, do we have the ability to go back and reestablish it again for the, another 30 years under the same, assuming that the legislation and all the, the yeah. statutes are still in place? Um, so, yes, um, but <coughs> your original assessed value, your starting value, you reset the assessed value. Yeah. yeah, okay, right. Peter. Yeah, just two quick questions. One, when you said, when you d described where we could actually have a downtown TIF, you said it had to be based on the economic, I, I don't know how you phrase that, economic and activity center of. Is there any risk because 
there really isn't anything at Scarborough Downs that that how did we how did we include that within that definition that it qualifies? It's a good question, and we thought of this a few months ago, and as a result, I had a conversation with folks at DECD to make sure they understood what we were trying to accomplish here. Yeah. So we fe felt comfortable, given their indication, that that we could include what we feel the town of Scarborough envisions to be the downtown or the future downtown for Scarborough. Would so, you identify yeah. DCD for the public? Yes, sorry, the Department of Economic and Community Development of the state of Maine. That's the um, state entity that reviews these applications for statutory compliance following council approval. Thank you. And I do have the definition here because Tom had it in his back pocket. <laughs> so, um, it means the traditional central business district of a community that has served as the center of socioeconomic interaction in the community, characterized by a cohesive core of commercial and mixed-use buildings, often interspersed with civic, religious, and residential buildings and public spaces that are typically arranged along a main street and intersecting side streets and served by public infrastructure. So that's why I didn't have that memorized. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so Peter, second kind of a follow-up, I thought also in some of the stuff that I read that certainly best practice, but also I thought a critical part of the process, and it's sort of which comes first, but I thought you had to have a clearly sort of articulated sort of plan of what you wanted to do with the TIF district, what, what you have to lay out what it is exactly you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. yes. And I haven't seen that in any of the materials, so where do we get that specific plan about we're creating this, this downtown area because mm -hmm. this is what we want to do, and that would then, I'm jumping a little bit ahead about sure. the proposed here, but it would seem like we'd want to identify specific mm -hmm. things that generate public good that we're going to do. And, and so I have a, when does that work take place and doesn't that have to be part of the application? It, it, it does. And, and should we're, that be part yeah, of a conversation that we have? Exactly. We're working on that now. We're waiting for the, um, trying to get the final numbers. We'll have that ready on Friday for everyone to take a look at um, as part who's, of this whole process. Everyone? The, the council, or are you for, it's, we will be ready for everybody. On this Friday. is the so-called downtown redevelopment plan. It's a separate standalone document that is a requirement of this uh, downtown approach. But we haven't seen it, right, as a council? No, you haven't. Mm -hmm. It's it's in process as we speak. We've been working feverishly. So I think that would be so. It, part of tonight is we want to designate what we want to spend money on. That seems like that'd be a critical sort of information. Yeah, and I assure you the, there's a laundry list, including the, in the kitchen sink, uh, in terms of potential things to spend money on. What I'm showing you is a very narrow slice, yep. and left to my own devices, I'd be proposing a more robust uh, use of TIF revenues, but I appreciate uh, sensitivity, and, and I think this town's going to have this conversation quite a bit over the, sometime in the next five years uh, based on how the credit enhancement agreement is currently laid out in terms of this conversation that will be going forward. So I expect there'll be rich conversation and opportunity sooner than later to maybe uh, come back to all of these points. So I think it's important to start off slowly, uh, particularly given the fact that we don't expect it's going to perform much of anything in the early years anyway. But, but, but a question. So the, the critical piece on the table was how much money is the assessed value? I had heard it was old values. It was $187 million or so. If the commercial reval, which is the other part of the equation, is a 30% bump, that means what we're talking about tonight, if it's 3% or 5% or 6%, what we decide tonight could immediately put money into that pot. If we go with the last year's value, correct, yes. right out of the gate, there's a 30% yes. increase in a, on $187 million. So it's not... It's not insignificant. In year two or so. But yeah, and that's why I'm, that's an important distinction. And, and I don't want to be make, part of the discussion later in the evening. I don't oh, want to right. make that decision. There wasn't much money in the pot, but that could put. That would put money, money in, in the pot. immediately. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah. <clears throat> well, so <clears throat> you, you mentioned that we're carving off part of the, the Downs um, property line. Does that, does that make, make it so that it all, you know, has some. You know, the, the area that falls outside of that TIF district now has diff is in the outside of the CEA? Correct. Um, no, actually, development that occurs within it would count toward the performance measures. So it's, it's involved to that extent. 
cents in it again. So that but, but the revenue that they would generate would not flow back. Correct. The performance it's, measures yeah. that we've negotiated uh, as part of the credit enhancement agreement have uh, non-residential square footage build out. And the way the negotiations have trended or, or gone is that they want the ability to count those 50 acres or so, whatever development they would have on that, toward their performance measures of non-residential build out. Oh, but not not other build out in no, the just that that district. Within their ownership. It just yeah, happens yeah, to okay. be yeah. carved off in a different district. Got it. Thank you. We're, uh, am I correct that the uh, downtown redevelopment plan is be has been largely developed? Yes. Uh, uh, and we're not uh, selecting things from that. Uh, uh, the there's a whole myriad of, of choices. Can you give us a little about what the how the downtown redevelopment sure. plan got created? Yeah. So in draft uh, form, obviously. Right. Right. So the um, it, back in August when we first did the um, the first workshop with the council, we we had pulled all the development, um, all the potential projects that were from existing studies that had been done. There was a 2005 traffic um, a transportation study. There was the Oak Hill pedestrian study. Um, there was a handful of projects that had been talked about. And so what we did, because we were trying to keep things fairly simple um, with this plan, is to say there are enough projects on um, this list that could uh, potentially uh, fill the the, uh, or use the funds that we would reserve, and so what we did is we, we kept it to that list and said that's the that's the project list. It's been identified in previous studies. Um, that's the potential list that we can draw from, um, and from that again, there's everything from um, streetscape improvements, you know, benches, lighting, those types of things. Um, but I think what Tom is saying is we've got that list of projects and you'll see that in um, really the, the strategy because that's part of it. We need to talk about um, things that we've already discussed and, and felt like we needed to do. But it may not be part of um, the list of eligible projects uh, going forward. But we will have that in the strategy. Again, we didn't come up with new projects. We, st we stuck with um, whatever has already been talked about. But, but to be clear, I thought what we have here at Table 1 tonight under our consideration doesn't list any of those. That's correct. It lists funding general economic development. Mm -hmm. And is it correct in assuming if this goes through, the only way we get to that project list is we're going to have to go back and amend the original documents. Well, I think you true? have traffic general... There's two categories. There's a, a general traffic category that does not right. list specific projects. You're correct. And then this general category of supporting economic development initiatives. Right. But that doesn't mean everyone. This list, that would exclude a lot of the things that's on this list unless right. we specifically, we, we'll have to go back and adopt, you know, amend. Correct. Well, I, I'm not um, so sure about that. Yeah. Well, it depends on which, which things on the list. In other words, I think we've got traffic on the list, but we don't necessarily have signage or water quality, some of those other project lists. Um, so in that case, <coughs> they are eligible to be spend money on the TIF, but we're not listing them as part of the project list. Right, I guess my only point is shouldn't right? we right. have a comprehensive list when we initially file rather than having to go back and amend? I think that could be exceedingly difficult to identify what your priorities are. I suggest you do it through your annual budget process and vet those projects and decide what's worthy um, to do when you want to do it. And this is intended to grant, uh, have us grant ourselves, if you will, approved by DCD, kind of broad authorization to then really focus in and decide which particular projects we want to do and when. So as I, as I read this list, number one, traffic related, there's only four items on this list that I wouldn't classify within number one. Mm -hmm. um, everything else, I mean, yeah. is literally the, the key words, the traffic calming, streetscape, mm -hmm. um, lights, roads, sidewalks, signalization, Sorry. utilities. So all but four of these items in this list are listed in number one. Way I look at it. So, so, so I, I, uh, I appreciate the work done on this list for sure, um, but it's not comprehensive. 
by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, we had an energy meeting this morning where there was a whole laundry list of things we wanted to add within the TIF district itself. So how difficult would it be to amend the project list to have generalized categories like you've got traffic related? Could we have energy related? Could we have uh, uh, stormwater sewer infrastructure related and not get down to I want to add street lights because in 30 years we may not know what that project's going to be but at least we have the flexibility to uh, invest in connectivity let's say or something that's coming down the road so so that the topics are broad and general enough to be a kind of a catch-all for future projects but but a specific enough for us a lot to be allowed to capture some of those projects under this so, so the answer is that it depends on what it is you want to add, mm -hmm. because a, an energy catch-all doesn't work under the TIF statutory project cost list. We need to be able to identify how it matches up with one of the um, identified statutorily authorized economic development projects. Uh, you know, there is a uh, provision that says environmental improvement projects that mm -hmm. have an economic development potential. So mm -hmm. I can imagine some energy projects mm. would fall under that, but some sure. wouldn't. But, so, right. um, so, but they're in, in a sort of more comprehensive review of what all the possibilities would be for um, down, you know, TIF revenue usage by the municipality. We, could, we can certainly um, undertake that process, but we're not on a schedule to accomplish that on a timeline. For instance, in a hypothetical, moment. if the town wished to build a um, distributed generation or cogeneration facility and we intended to provide electricity to an area of town and in doing so reduce their energy costs I think that probably that the, the the problem that DECD would have with that is that we need we would need to be paying for it only to the extent it serves mm -hmm. business um, businesses or a business district or economic development. So but, if it right. serves a residential area, then... So I can give you an example. We've got the Trigen right next door. When the public safety building goes in, there's a potential we may have to expand that. Or as the municipal campus expands, the usage and utilization of that system may need to expand. So is something like that covered under the TIF? Or because it would be used within the district as long as we confine to, to this advanced, geographical area. It's not for the purpose of advancing economic development. So but it's a municipal be. benefit, right? Because it's not... If that was true, they would be building town halls and fire stations and community uh, services buildings all over the state. Uh, they've really yeah. tightened up all of those loop loopholes. But there, there is a line to, to some piece of what you're saying, which mm -hmm. is to the extent that district development is creating the need for some other municipal facility, some, to some extent, the ECD it has been known to approve those. So, for example, you need to build a whole new fire station because the district development that actually TIF revenue can be used for if it was put into a TIF project list. But, um, but we just have to look at that based on the TIF statute in specific project areas or project ideas. You, you can't um, build a new public works facility wherever it is um, with TIF revenue unless we find a way that it's connected to the economic development for the municipality and the TIF district um, under the statute. The, uh, but, but, but you can fund it through the portion that goes into the general fund and undesignated. Course, yes. Right. So you can still achieve the same, it's just in a different pot. <coughs> we don't, you, don't, you don't receive you don't get the, the benefits. benefits. Right. You don't get you the get benefits the of sheltering, right. and if you're going to pay for it anyway, we might as well get the double advantage of, cool. of sheltering it. Exactly. Well, that's, that's the point. That's the point. And also creating essentially a reserve account for agreed upon <coughs> priorities. Yeah, my, my concern is that, and, and, and I, I'm going to say this with all respect, and I totally mean that, um, you know, there's funding in here for SEDCO and economic development, and I think that's important. My concern is going to be at 3%, if that pot grows to 50 million or whatever it is, I'm using out of the pie in the sky numbers, I'm just saying, is that money only dedicated to SEDCO? Yeah. <laughs> at SEDCO yeah. and, and, no, and like or traffic right. improvements? Right. I mean, remember that, that this is the body that approves the expenditure of TIF revenue on mm -hmm. each of these projects on an annual basis. So at any point you discover there's an imbalance, you have way more TIF revenue mm -hmm. than you have what you believe to be legitimate uses on the project mm -hmm. list, you're, we're going to be doing an amendment in you, that. You very throttle moment. back your percentage. Right. You're, you're right. growing that yeah. far faster than you ever need it. And I think the reason we put the economic development staffing piece in there is because then it removes it from the general fund. 
So I think in all cases, we were trying to maximize and the I, general fund piece of that. So that was an eligible cost. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. I'm just saying that there are other, I think there are other costs I'd like to see looked at mm -hmm. from a town-wide perspective. So I appreciate the list. It's a good this list. is low-hanging fruit. I, so I agree. That's it's, fine. It's, but, you know, if we're going to, you know, if we're going to do this, low-hanging fruit is an easy out, I think. Um, maybe we want to put a little more effort into seeing what what's out there for potential on the transportation, I mean, on the uh, energy side and on the infrastructure, stormwater side and what, whatever we can. You know, uh, if we're going to make this, we're going to, my approach would be if we're going to spend the money in the district for development, which we obviously are going to at some point, whether it's through interconnectivity or infrastructure upgrades, to the extent we can shelter that in a TIF, it's a win-win because we're going to either pay for those anyway out of the general fund and not receive that sheltered benefit or, you know, which is fine. I mean, it's, they're going to come, but if we can find a way to capture that and protect it, it's, it's a win-win in my mind because we're paying for that infrastructure but receiving that extra benefit. So I'd really like to see it not be just kind of a, I, you know, I'd personally like to see a little bit more of a, of a really kind of ringing out what's available for us to, to, to shelter and then come back and put some maybe hard numbers to it. Well, the challenge is the timeline that we're on requires us to complete these documents, frankly, by this Friday so they can be available for public inspection. So uh, we can do what you ask, but it's going to take time. Well, have, have we officially moved into the next section of the discussion? Probably not. We're done with the discussion. <laughs> I have a comment related to that, yeah. <laughs> but I don't want to jump ahead. Uh, uh, so. go, go ahead. Okay. Um, so I guess my, my, old, my argument would be, given the time frame, we, we, you know, chances are very good that we're going to be making significant amendments to this over the next five years. Mm -hmm. We're not going to have a ton of revenue beyond whatever we choose for the baseline, uh, potentially, that's going to have grown out of here that, that it, it seems like starting small and then having that public process around, like, what is it that we really want to do with the downtown, with the community center, and, and can use these funds for, will give us that opportunity to then add to that laundry list of, of things that are, are potential. Uh, can you explain, uh, is the downtown redevelopment plan a statutory requirement of filing the TIF application, and how do they relate? Sure. So, so the TIF statute requires that it, for municipalities that want to designate a downtown TIF district, that it has to um, also have approved and submit to with that application a downtown redevelopment plan. Um, that's pretty much it from what the statute says. In actual in um, application, when the submission is made to DECD, the, the Department of Economic and Community Development, they also then send the application and the downtown redevelopment plan to the main Department of Transportation and the main Oh, it's this. It's the form. It's whatever now exists um, that used to be the state planning office, which mm -hmm. is some very long name that I'm going to mess up if I try. But wherever the state planning function rests, they are um, tasked with reviewing the application and the downtown redevelopment plan and providing what's called an advisory back to DECD before DECD issues its approval letter to, to the municipality for the district. That advisory process, it doesn't say they have to say it's good or bad. <coughs> they, they, have, they cannot prevent DECD from um, issuing an approval letter if it's consistent with statute. But I have seen, for example, DOT provide feedback that says, um, you know, I think you should do this road work a certain way because it's Route 1 and um, offering feedback in a practical way to, to what's listed in a downtown redevelopment plan. Um, but it can mean a slower approval, frankly, from DECD because those other entities don't will, will take their time sometimes because they have other things. Peter? Yeah, I guess if we're jumping ahead, I mean, I guess where I am, this doesn't seem like it's uh, – I'm a little frustrated that we have till Friday to resolve this. I mean, this, this really has been on our table for a while. I'd be in the place. I agree sort of with Chris. I, I would rather see – the said cove development still come out of the budget process every year so it's so we don't cauterize it into a tiff going forward i would rather see specific i would make a suggestion there where i would be is 
we can file this agreement without any, any monies designated. We can start with zero being withheld, so we don't have to identify the projects. We can wait till the comprehensive plan is done. To me, this is, this is we, we as a body have not taught, we, have any, we won't see the economic development plan. I think that's something the council should at least see and review and have a conversation about. We haven't had conversations about these specific items that are on the list. It just doesn't feel like by Friday, I'm going to feel comfortable that we're, we're going to have all this nailed down and chance for all of us to review it. I would, I would recommend, that was the question at the top of the hour, that at, we start off with no withhold until we get better clarity from the comprehensive plan in this body sitting together and deciding you know, what are the things we do want to invest in. I'm not comfortable having the money go to SEDCO as one of the startups with actually no, no designation here on how much that is. And that's just where I am as an individual. But this doesn't, I'm not comfortable. I don't know what the economic development plan is. I don't know. If, if someone asks me, what do we intend to do with the development of the downtown TIF? I don't have an answer. And, and we need, if I don't have an answer, the public doesn't have an answer. I just, I just want to make sure on the issue of making designations, this is about receiving authorization to spend money on certain things. This council, this legislative body will make those decisions when and how much you spend on what, but they have to be within the designated and approved areas. So I just, for everyone's benefit, you're, we're not asking you to approve and I actually start funding SEDCO right away, that it's a, it's a direct line to fund that. That's still fully within your control. It's about creating a fund to offset existing costs in, in the general fund. Well, yeah, I just, I'd like to point out that the, the benefit here is that we get five and a half cents on the dollar. I mean, every, every dollar that we shelter we make five and a half cents. So, well, I mean, that's not, that's not sheltering 3%. Of, it's not many dollars. I mean, oh. in the scheme I, of life. I agree that it's not, it's not much, but we can, start, we can start to do it. And to your point earlier, it could be significant based on where we set the valuation. If these are things that we're going to be spending money on anyway, mm -hmm. you know, we all know that at some point over the next 30 years, we're going to have to address the traffic on Route 1. Mm -hmm. We're paying for SEDCO every year out of the budget anyway. Why, are we, why, why don't we pay 94.5% instead of 100% of it? Because, I mean, what, what the public needs to understand, as I understand it, just get verification. The budget process is an annual process. We go in front of the constituents, they get to see it. Any monies that we put into this pool, the voters have no say over what happens to it. We decide as a town council, it's not a line item budget, right? Well, I, I thought we, we were saying we were, gonna, we were going to try and but dispense it through. We the, dispense the funds through yeah, the budget. But, but, but for instance, right now we have a charter that says anything over four hundred thousand dollars has to go to the voters for approval. That's bonded. 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 bonded, bonded, But that's I mean, traffic's going to be bonded. I doubt we do it out of cash. Well, wait, but we, we, that's okay. the whole point of it. Yeah, that's the whole purpose, right? No, no, the whole well, the, what I'm just trying to point out, our audience is going to say, geez. You know, our charter says that this type of expenditure needs to go to the voters. We're creating a pool of money where large capital expenditures will not have to go to the voters. And, and that's I don't fine think if that's, you that's the case, that's Peter. I don't, I don't see that. I don't understand that because what I think do you mean? I don't know how you're calling it large capital expenditures. We're sheltering. All we're doing is sheltering revenue that we're going to have to pay no matter what, whether we create a TIF or not, we're going to fund SEDCO. Whether we create a TIF or not, we're going to have infrastructure improvements on Route 1 as the town grows. Whether it grows as a result of a crossroads or development in West Scarborough, whatever it's going to be. So those, those expenses are going to come no matter what. I guess what I'm having trouble understanding is why wouldn't we, to Will's point, shelter as much of that as we possibly capture as much of that work that we can legally and statutorily and, and only pay 94 or 95 cents on the dollar instead of a full dollar. I don't understand the argument there. The argument? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just trying to articulate. We need to be aware of what some folks are going to say in the community. You can discount it if you want. But they're going to say, let's just take one of these things, bicycle links. That's probably more than $400,000 expenditure, right? No, it depends on how you All do right, it and take, how you stage let's it. Take and, 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 you, and you may only be apportioning a... a, a, a a smaller amount, and you may still use bonds for the balance. Right. We do that every year through the annual that's, budget process that's, anyway. What you're doing is you're getting a very um, small 5% benefit. I, okay. I guess I, 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 well, I express my concern. Again, I, I would say that we're going to have to address traffic on Route 1 at some point over the next 30 years. I think 
that, that is a that is just a fact that we're gonna have to that we're gonna have to deal with. And I, I mean, I, I I take your point around you know we need the public to be bought in, um, but um, but I, and I don't know that I was saying that we should maximize as much as possible, but we should be you know thoughtful about the amount that we put in there and, and we shelter. But we should be sheltering the things that we know that we're gonna be spending money on on anyway. And just a clarification, mm -hmm. Sean. Having something in the project list does not remove it from the normal budgeting process. Uh, in other words, we're going to, it, it goes through, if SEDCO is funded through this, it doesn't change how we are presented in the budget. We still go through the regular process. It's about where you're pulling those funds from. Mm -hmm. But we in no way are exempt or changed. Well, and just a point it, of clarification, we could. I mean, a council, you could choose to spend TIF revenues or any other revenues um, at any point, frankly. That's within your right as a legislative body. There's a, a little uh, provision, a paragraph at the top of Table 1 in anticipation of this issue that we're committing to not doing that. We're, gonna, we're committing to flowing all of these monies through the annual budget process and the, the rigors that that process has. And, and the council can decide its own direction in the future. We, I mean, you're suggesting yeah. that, but... To your point, um, if there's if there's, you know, if there's fifty thousand dollars in the in the TIF fund, um, and the council decides to appropriate that to Sedco, they're within that their authority to do that, right? That require an amendment? I mean, if we're no, if we're I'm just saying, saying if it's if it's already in the fund and TIF, Jeffrey, we may maybe the maybe the council futures councils decide to hold on to that money and let it accrue for whatever reason, right. and now there's a big pot of money. Mm -hmm. Well, there's only two, right now, as it stands, there's only two opportunities to dispense that. And, you know, it yeah. may be to, you know, we, you know, we're going to use it. Let's use it, right? Nothing. So I don't, I guess I, I, I'm not necessarily worried about those kind of restrictions. I'm, I'm kind of back on the fact that let's maximize the potential benefit of, of sheltering. And I think that takes, a, to Peter's point, I think that takes a little bit more work and a little bit more of a, of a thoughtful, deeper dive. But let's, let's, there's also another issue with dealing with it, and that's time, right? right? So is it possible for us, because we have the ability in the future <laughs> to expand the geography or expand the project list, could we, just for the sake of pushing forward an existing CEA, and I'm, this is for debate, I'm not advocating one way or another, could we establish the downtown district based on the current boundaries that we have um, yeah, for the CEA agreement, and then talk about later on what area that's going to be, or what projects that's going to be, or are we do we have a minimal district requirement or minimal geographical or infrastructure requirement that we have to cover for a downtown area? So, so for this to be a downtown TIF district, mm -hmm. there's been careful thought put into how we meet that definition that mm -hmm. I read earlier. So. Mm -hmm. What I would suggest, if the council's not prepared to um, act on the municipal project list component or the captured value related to it, is to have a 0% capture for the rest of the TIF district okay. um, for the time being. And, yep. um, and that then, you know, even potentially state an intention to revisit in the future for purposes of considering municipal project costs. Um, another component in here, and I can remember if this is part of the materials. Um, yes, so so we're all aware of the intention to consider the credit enhancement agreement with Scarborough Downs. The uh, development program as currently drafted also reserves um, the council's right to enact and uh, enter into future credit enhancement agreements otherwise in the TIF district generally. And so um, I just want to remind you of that. There, that would essentially be the reason and purpose for having um, the TIF district covering that the rest of that area in the near term, or mm -hmm. sort of one of the justifications for having a zero percent capture in those areas, um, but that's an option. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. That's where I was. That option. Well, yeah, I, I could I could see that. And um, however, I think that the things that we are I mean we're we're starting very small with a, with a three percent, so it, it probably isn't terribly material. But it is. We are giving away five and a half cents on the dollar for for everything that we don't we don't capture. And if we know that there are expenditures such as Sedco's expenditures, uh, it 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 feels like <laughs> we're making an imprudent decision if we were to to do 
to go all the way to zero. I, I would agree with you. I mean, that it's 3 percent. It's not much, but it's we know we're going to spend that money for uh, uh, either uh, transportation uh, on Route 1 uh, or uh, SEDCO services for economic development. So why, why throw away 5.5 percent? But, but let's but it would be really helpful to have numbers. You keep saying it's not much. If, if we don't even know what the assessed value within the TIF is, both in last year's dollars and after rebound, what is that differential? What's that times what, 3%? What, what would be your concerns, though, Peter? Because, if, again, if, I think to Will's point, if it's going to be, if it's, if it's money that's going to be appropriated for those projects and, the, and that requirement anyway, does it, does it, does, it's not like it's, it's, it's not a, a, a it's not a. It's not part of a, a tax rebate or anything like that, or you know, a CEA where we're giving money back. We're actually, in essence, sheltering money we were going to spend in that area anyway. So I guess I, I mean I understand what you're saying. It'd be nice to have those finite numbers, but I guess from my from why the we, from why the don't we have. I mean, just, would you be helpful for the conversation and know what we're talking? About? I, I guess I from a from a philosophical perspective, I don't know if I, I would need that because again, if it's, we're shelter, we know we're sheltering operational funds that we're going to have anyway. So whether it's three percent or five percent or eight percent, um, you know, I, I I think it's money w we would be outlaying regardless. And I think the prudent financial thing would be to try and capture as much of that. If maybe we can't do it between now and Friday. And I granted, I that I agree with you 100 percent. There's I think there's a lot more things out there. To Tom's point, this is the low hanging fruit. I say we get the whole tree. Okay, we just can't do it by Friday. Right? I, guess I'll, I guess all I'm saying by Friday, put zero in. And come back and have that detailed conversation but about what it is we're going to do. What does that do for us, though? What it, What does that do? Because it, it doesn't it doesn't shelter it doesn't, any of the any of the expenses we're going to have anyway, right? I mean, and the, we're talking five percent. I mean, it's not. A, I mean, Bill says it's not much money. But it, well, if, well, if it's not, well, then if it's not much money, then let's. Well, the problem is we don't know how much money we're talking about. Right, why don't let's? Uh, I guess I don't know. I've been that. very quiet. Katie, you, you know what I mean. Raise your hand. <laughs> You're did. recognized. Thank you very much. I taught my students. Um, I think we're kind of getting into the weeds, and instead of you know keeping up to the big picture, um, we know time is of the essence, and I, I think we, there's a way to make this a win-win. We can change the capture rate down the road. That's not a problem. If three percent feels too much to start with, but we want to save capture some, let's start at two percent. Does that make people feel better? So let's go with bullet one and not let, both bullets let, let's to go start with. Let's go around the table and get a sense of, Tom, uh, the town manager, uh, Mr. Hall, has made a recommendation of 3%. Uh, we could, Councilor Foley saying, we could do 2%. We've seen zero. Let's get a sense of where people are because what we're trying to do is give the town manager direction and uh, uh, in finishing this documentation for Friday. Uh, and so let's see if we can, uh, I don't think it would help to necessarily move to the last question uh, right away, which is what the uh, original assessed value is. We have two choices in that regard. But why don't we start, Sean, you want to start? No. OK. I'll start. Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, so Tonight's not the final answer. I mean, we're just directionally going tonight so they can prepare the documents that will then go out to a public public <coughs> forum and would then require yeah. council uh, right. action later. Is that I think correct? there's an objection by just you. So, just so you understand the implications, so Friday will be 10, the, the, the public hearing notice will be published. So we want to make sure the public has access to the final documents that will be the topic of the public hearing. Um, if documents substantively change from what is existing on Friday, um, then it's my recommendation you do a new public hearing mm -hmm. before you take final action as a council on it so that um, the public has en enough notice of what that final document is. If, if, the, per if all, the only change was the percentage was either changing from 2% to 3% or 3% to 2% or 2% to 0, would you consider that, a that type of material change? I would. I would. I mean, you know, it, it, theoretically, 
someone could say, I stayed home because I thought you picked the right thing. I didn't come to the public hearing. So, I mean, that's that's how I advise municipalities about holding these public hearings. Well, that kills my entire argument. But, uh, <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I apologize for that. Uh, but well, my second point, yes. yeah, I have another point, uh, was that um, I think we should keep the, the bullet points regardless of, of the percentage because it gives us a place to start and a thing to, to, to aim at. Even if we go with a zero, um, I wouldn't be opposed to having those things in the um, all of the these or just the uh, two what, what has been what has been written I, I don't think that we really can craft this in time and I think there's really too much there that that to Peter's point re requires some public input. Uh, and so I would hold off on on uh, expand being more expensive Peter yeah I think I, for purposes I would be at zero for now so we don't have to produce this list and then we can go back and once we have a chance to look at the economic development plan and other things, we can come back and change the percentage that, that incorporates your things. But I think for the public, it's going to be easier for us to advance the zero without getting into 1%, 2%, especially where I've asked three or four times tonight, if we're unwilling to let the differential be known between what the two decision points are, that's not transparency. I we're mean, we know, what, we know what those numbers are. But they're in process. We, we, we have you know one set of, pardon? I mean, we can estimate what those numbers are. I, I you know, without, without what me knowing. What differential are you talking about? The last, the, the last decision point. If, if we use oh, the, right. the, commercial, right. the commercial reval, there is no money in the first couple of years, so it doesn't make any difference. Good. If we use last year's, there's 30 to 40 percent of 187 million is going to be what goes into the, well, that percentage we decide on will be what goes into the pool. It makes a difference. First off, uh, the characterization that we're unwilling is actually wrong, Peter. So well, I just want to be clear on that. The implication is... Is there an estimate so available by Friday about that number? Absolutely, would be? yes. Okay, That's in process. That. Uh, it, and it's not 187 million. It's, in, it's closer to 100 million. So, Peter, you're at zero, zero percent. Katie? Uh... Stick in the middle of two <laughs> percent. No, but I, I mean, I, I would share. I have to say, you know, we we have this conversation a lot about having all the information in front of us with enough time to make those decisions. And I appreciate that it's in process, but I think we can and should do better with these pieces so that this kind of kind of conversation doesn't get to this place. If we have those numbers in front of us, we're not arguing about it because we've had time to evaluate it. Now we're going to be screeching to catch up is all, my only point. But I'm for the big picture of this all. I'm, I'm, you know, in support of it. I'd be more comfortable maybe to make a win-win if we went to 2%, knowing it can be changed later. Thank you. Chris? 3%, keep the bullets, adjust it later. Okay, right. Uh 3%, keep the bullets, and as I, my reason for asking the question I asked in the beginning was this can always be modified or changed, mm -hmm. so it's a good place to start. Yeah, sure. Um, my style is not to negotiate from a low point and try to go higher. Um, I, I don't think that that is a beneficial approach to um, understanding the problem or the challenge that we have. So starting at 3% or 2%, I think it should be higher. I think it should be in the range of anywhere from 10 to 15% at the very least. If you do the numbers, the total assessed valuation that's projected for the project just for this project is $600 million. A 3% capture on the value is $18 million in property value assuming on a generous side that um, taxes stay flat for the next 30 years at $17 or $16.96, it's only generating $350,000 towards this infrastructure development needs. We obviously have way more than infrastructure development. I don't even think $350,000 buys a bus um, in the town or a fire truck. So I think that we're starting from an extremely low point. I'm not understanding why we're starting this low and why not, why not we're you know, coming out of the bat at 10 or 15 and maybe even 20, 20%. And the bigger piece there is that the underlying is that, so we've talked about in the finance committee um, about these benchmarks and the analysis and four of our key benchmarks are debt related. The whole purpose of this TIF and the reserve is to be able to reduce debt over the long term for the needs that we have. So if we're not putting more money into that account and into that fund to fund it, then those ratios are going to go up and then we're going to scare everybody to death because then debt per capita, debt per assessed valuation, and these other measures that we're now benchmarking are going to skyrocket and they're going to go from green to yellow to red um, and everyone's going to get all upset because we're not being um, good fiduciary uh, officers for the town. So I think it should be higher. As far as the bullets and what's included in the content, I think actually on this list here, 
if you go through bullet number one, all but four of these issues are specifically listed in the traffic improvement piece. I, well, I forgot that I hadn't given a number when I, when I spoke. Um, so I, I agree that we're probably going to end up with something significantly higher, but I don't think we can do that until we identify the things that we're actually doing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, <coughs> So I don't, I don't see a material difference between 2% and 3%. And if, if we're bringing more people along, I'm happy with two. I, I know you're still going around, right? Because, but I, I just want to tell you, in the event that the council were to undertake a, a rather quick amendment um, and, and create a longer project list that has more time, and it were to be approved before your fiscal year starts next year, July 1, 2019, then that percentage of 3% or whatever is decided upon could actually, for the first year of this district, be the higher percentage, you know, so long as you, you were to get that amendment through by that time. Could you? I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't quite follow. So, so, <laughs> so let me back up. Th this district is going to be proposed to begin in your fiscal year that starts July 1, 2019. No matter what we do in the next few months, so long as it's approved before that time. So let's say it gets approved in the next month or two, um, and it goes to D DECD. While DECD is looking at it, the, the town could be undergoing a, a process to decide on a more comprehensive project list and a different percentage capture, and so long as that gets approved by July 1, that would be enforced before the first uh, year of the district. Gotcha. So, would, so this would be entirely moved? That wouldn't it, it commits you to a process on the timeline on an amendment. Right. That's assuming that we were right. able to. So if I, I guess I just want to clarify, I understand correctly, we, we can, as long as our application is in, we can amend that application mm -hmm. without restarting that process again? Because that's, so, and the, in essence, I think that's what we'd be doing, right? Because we would change, we'd change the list and we'd change the percentage either up or down or however we do it. But we would be making significant material changes to that. So I have had another circumstance where before DECD issued an approval letter, we submitted an amendment on behalf of that same municipality. And DECD decided to look at them together and then just issue one approval letter. Okay. They could do that. They could decide to issue an approval letter and then do an amendment. I mean, okay. you know, okay. but yes. So uh, what do you think about 2%? No, three's good for me. Okay. Uh, what do you? So I, I, I'd be fine with 2%, but I mean, hearing that answer that again that we that we could immediately we could we could start this at zero and address some concern and then immediately be presented with the fact that we would need to get some more specifics and some understanding about where we would need to go mm -hmm. and that we could get an application in the pipeline or else we're giving away five and a half cents on the dollar so there's a little bit of a, mm -hmm. of a stick there for us to make sure that the town takes action um, I, I could I mean, I could go for zero or two, or it really is immaterial. Okay. Uh, I just want to ask a question. Is, is, the, uh, is what you're talking about uh, some time an opportunity to identify specific projects with specific dollar costs associated? Is that what I'm understanding? Mm -hmm. uh, if, if that's the requirement, no, well, if that's the requirement, so, so. His is more top, like, uh, uh, to topical, like, yeah. energy. Right. So not I'm not a specific problem. If I if I could, yeah. I mean, looking at your traffic related improvements, I mean, to the extent that we are statutorily allowed, you know, are there things like uh, providing incentives for you know energy efficiency somewhere somehow? Uh, is there an, in the in the TIF district? You just let's be creative and 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 not just look at what our restrictions are going to be and how we're going to look, but how we can invest that money back into the TIF district in a better way. And what's acceptable? I mean, the, as, again, the point I made before about the trigen, that's good. there's going to come a, a point in the next 30 years where that's either going to need to be replaced or modified or expanded or something. If that falls statutorily under this, then let's, put, let's, let's cover that because to Will's point, if we're only paying 94 or 95 cents on the dollar, why wouldn't we do that? We're going to have to do it anyway. But if, if there's a statutory limit or a requirement that says we can't do it, then we can't do it and that's more general fund applications. So I just, I would like to see a a deeper dive, uh, you know, and engage maybe some of the other, uh, you know, committees. We've got some pretty high-powered committees in town, right? And say what, uh, not not pie in the sky stuff, but you know, get a get a framework, get a parameter. Say here's the box that we can work in, 
what would work, what wouldn't work. And if we have time to do that, that's great. You know, um, I wouldn't do that by press. that that process will take years, not months. I think you'd find some of the, at least some of the committees that I'm serving on are, are ready right now to put pen to paper and come up with a good, a good list. And, and just a final point, uh, really to Shauna, uh, in my experience with TIFs, uh, rather than great granularity and, and detail, there's more, it's better to seek broader authorization and then mm -hmm. to evaluate projects as they bubble through our process, through committees or through budgets, right. as to whether they square with the other's authorization. So mm -hmm. I think the expectation of identifying specific projects at that intersection at this cost is not something we should be considering. That's not our best interest. We should be looking for broader uh, authorization, much like it's described here. As long as we can have the breadth to make that decision and determine what those projects are. Set within, some priorities on it. Uh, right. right. I'm, 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 I agree with you, Tom. If we, you know, you've got traffic related, but you, and you've got some areas to work on. If we can do the same thing with other topics that aren't necessarily granular like this is, then yeah, that, I, I that'll work. My question is more to the concern I've heard Peter expressed, um, focusing on traffic. And, and maybe I was wrong in, in understanding what your point was. but. I just want to be clear, in my mind, there's, there shouldn't be an expectation that we're going to identify specific projects at the front end of this. And that's an exercise that um, will take years. Years. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, we can't I, possibly prioritize this. No, but I think, no. I think what you can do, though, Tom, is look at, look at the list of desires at this phase and see what kind of theme that they approach, right? And in generalize it, again, traffic-related improvements. That's something that, that is broad enough to, 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 in, in, to capture future projects 10, 15 years down the road. Do it with different topics. I just don't want to restrict us to only putting TIF money towards the traffic side of things. Right. That would I be my I understand your point, yeah. is it? Yeah. And that's, you agree, well, Peter? I want to make sure I'm understanding. I think my point was given what was just explained. I'd rather start, based on where we are and just the level of conversations, this is the first sort of full discussion we've had, would be, again, start with zero so we don't get, we're not stuck into this bucket, make it a priority that we work as whatever the right structure is to try to come up with the buckets and then we can amend as suggested um, before July, you know, 31st or 6.30, 7.1. And once we get a better idea of what the numbers are, we know what we're talking about, we can go back and, and select the percentage and select the wording, the phraseology on this list. Because I thought this was a pretty restrictive list, that these are the two buckets that money would go to unless we modify this. And I think that's what you're reacting to. I'm, I'm, I, I agree with you from the project side. I would disagree on the amount of, to put aside. I'm kind of in Sean's camp where I, well, I mean, the more we put aside. But that's a future, yeah. a future conversation. Well, and I, I think that's, that I'd, I'd be more comfortable having the future conversation once we have all the information. I, I think that process is a lengthy process. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the council probably is consensus that we should pursue it. That uh, because I would or towards Sean's remarks of seeking a higher figure of sheltered money, but I would I'd need to know specifically uh, how we were going to use that money so there'd be a high degree of confidence both in the town council and the public as to the direction we were heading. That's a process that could easily be through the end of the fiscal year, June 30th, uh, 2019, or beyond. Uh, but I think that we ought to advance that. In the meantime, I'm fine with 3%. It's modest as can be. Can't, couldn't be more modest. But uh, it's a start. Uh, and, uh, and we'll see where we get by next June 30th. Next town council probably will make that something of an important priority because I, I hear Councillor Cazzo's remarks and I think they resonate, that there are other things. But we're trying to do a number of things uh, uh, and, and get to the goal line here where we're going to be able to then reset and, and take the next step in 2019. So uh, I guess I would say keeping it at 3% is where I think we are. Uh, we have some people who would be zero yeah. or two or two or three 
Or zero, two, or three. Or z <laughs> but, but, but for but purposes not of... Not one. Right. Definitely right? not one. Right. 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 But right. for purposes of, of, <laughs> of moving to the next issue, I would say we're at 3%. Then, but the second question becomes, and would you keep the list the same? I'm, I'm just raising a flag. I think if you, if you have, for the public, SEDCO as being targeted as a funding stream, there's going to be pushback. So I just, I just raise that. So... So the only, my only counter to that or my only point being to that is these are two things we know we spend money on every year and we will always spend money on. Uh, how the, the challenge for me becomes, and this is why I wouldn't support a 10% or 15%, is because we're not de getting into the details enough yet and we don't know that. So, I mean, I do think 2%, 3% for now is modest, but I think this is something that demands a lot more time and attention and detail. Um, and again, I think having some of this information in front of us earlier um, would have been helpful and needs to be some, something part of our practice going forward that we can't always feel like we're chasing things backwards. That's what it feels like to me tonight. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree. I think there's a good list here of very specific things that would, that would be traffic related um, that, you know, over the next 30 years we're going to have to address and that if this goes into a fund, and, and I think the, the thing we are all going to cover it. Definitely not. Hearing from Attorney Mueller, I think the one thing is very clear: it's not a static process. Right. Uh, it's one that is uh, going to evolve over time, and we're going to be able to have more information, a clearer process that leads to our own decision making on that. Uh, and we can't set a timetable on that, but I think at least we're we're much more knowledgeable now about what what we can do. So let's move to uh, question number three on, uh, which is, which, ba I'm reading from uh, Town Manager Hall's uh, email to us of yesterday, which base should be used in establishing the, quote, original assessed value for purposes of identifying the increment? The real question is, should the values after the commercial and industrial revaluation be used for this purpose? Uh, yeah. Any comments before we launch into a discussion of this? I think staff's inclined to say yes to that, that yeah. we should be using the updated values for the purpose of this. We did not want to make that decision on our own, and so that's why we bring it to you. All right, so the, the question is, just so it's all clear, uh, by statute, if we do nothing, it's uh, March 31, 2000 and... Um, 2018, which really is April 1, 2017. Which is the ex existing. Well, pre 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 But we can adopt the uh, April 1, 2018 numbers. For purposes of making that calculation. Correct. So according to okay. the statute, the original assessed value will be as of April 1, 2017. We would just elect in the development program materials to start counting captured value at a higher number based on the April 1, 2018 number. Just so the recommendation from the administration is let's start with the number that is the most recent number of assessed values, which is the updated partial reval numbers that are effective as of this year. Well, I have two questions. Um, the first question being, is that something that you can change later? Like the way that we could change, go back and if we amend this thing, can we go back to the original number? You could, yeah. I mean, the original assessed value is statutorily defined. That will be April 1, 2017. So that's, so that's six billion. So it would be fair game for a future amendment. Great. And then the second question was, um, curious um, why that would be the recommendation or what the thinking was behind the recommendation. Well, there's certainly value uh, captured or created by virtue of that. Um, I don't, I can't quote you off the top of my head what the dollar amount is or what the percentage, but it's you know in the order of 20 or 30 percent over the entire district potentially. Um, so there's immediate value created, and it's whether you want to let that flow to the general fund by including it in the base year for calculation, or um, capture it and. Um, have it subject to the credit enhancement agreement, reimbursement terms, and or directed uh, to municipal programs. 
one additional thought on that is where I've seen this come up is and it, it's a little bit less of an impact in a, in a town as large as Scarborough, but um, this valuation will have been part of your general fund expenditures for the current fiscal mm. year. So you will, next year. you will be taking it back out for next year. Okay. It's in our budget, FY19 <laughs> budget this year. If, if we were to not do what we're talking about, it would actually come out of and not be available in the general fund next year and cause some potential budget challenges. Right. I think the, the reason I would support using the updated partial reval numbers of April 1, 2018 is it's the real number. Right. It's the value as of the That's present right. time. Uh, uh, it's already been used in our budget process. So I'd be inclined to say we're not, we're starting this TIF now. We're going to calculate the value of improvement now and not be reaching back uh, into the past. So that's my sense. Sean? I, I, I totally agree with the recommendation to start. Um, I mean, let's, the other piece of this outside of the challenge to the budget, which really isn't a driving uh, force for me, is that the increased valuation has nothing to do with the TIF designation or the crossroads development. Right. So why muddy the water and compare or, or try to combine the two for some other type of advantage? I think it's cleaner, it's easier for people to understand mm -hmm. um, and more acceptable. Yeah. Others? So I guess I, w I would say that, you know, the reason why we would do it would be because we would take advantage of that captured right. mm -hmm. value in each other. But I, I, don't, I don't like creating the, mm. the taking out of mm. next year's budget uh, valuation. Um, and I like the fact that if we change our mind in the future and we, we've identified those things and we want to capture as much value as possible, we have the ability to go back and, and get it. So I, I Just an observation that if, a, if you choose to increase the amount from 3% to something higher, it will have that same practical effect when you make that change, that you're, you have become accustomed to that money flowing to the general fund and it be available for general purposes. Right. If you up that amount, um, there's some pain to the general fund. The, uh, but I think... So I, I, the only point is you do it now before the value is created, you, you're not used to it. It's not part of the budget. But I think in fairness, though, we're, 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 we're if I'm understanding it correctly, we're, we're, instead of taking a dollar out of the general fund and paying for a service, we're taking 90, we're taking a dollar out of the TIF district, we're paying 95 cents and keeping five and a half or a nickel and a half or whatever it is. So it's not like we're, we're depleting the general fund at the expense of other areas. We're taking general fund revenues that we would have used on expenses for that district and paying them through a better funding mechanism that's That's true. To the us. extent that those are costs you would incur anyway, that's right. true, but I'm not sure if that's always the case. So we have a recommendation from uh, uh, the town manager. Does anyone, and I get a sense that there's support for it, does anyone want to speak against it? This is going to be a shorter conversation than I thought. <laughs> uh, then I think we are, we've reached the conclusion. Sean. Uh, so I just wanted a uh, closing comment, if you don't mind. So one of the things I think that Peter brought up that I think is absolutely important to emphasize is that as the council and any council establishes new policies, new contract agreements, we have to go back and look at how we process that information and share. So, you know, Peter brought up very clearly some concerns that some might have regarding transparency about expenditures related to the TIF in a future. And I think that would call maybe the finance committee to evaluate how it presents its budget and to um, extract out or have a separate documentation that says, Related to the TIF, we here are all the expenditures, and here is the item so that it's clearly understood, yeah. um, so that the citizens kind of understand going forward, um, and then we make that part of the regular, you know, budgetary process because, you know, that's what we should be doing as far as reevaluating what we contribute. Other comments before I ask for any public uh, comment? Anyone uh, sitting in the audience who's been listening for the last hour and twenty minutes will have the opportunity to. Uh, Put their two cents in. So, Chris. Yeah, it's we haven't really touched on it, um, and I, I, I don't want to make an issue of it. Um, I, I, I'm curious as to the geographical layout. Um, I don't know why more of Sawyer wasn't captured in that, only because I'm thinking 20, 30 years down the line, interconnectivity between the municipal campus and whatever development is on 
uh, the crossroads. Might It might be in our best interest to try and have a way to connect those two. Obviously, it's not possible mm -hmm. now, but things could change <coughs> as properties become available as things yeah. change. So I just I looked at that, and it looks a little odd. I don't know why I just draw on a straight line. I know we've got conservation land there that obviously we're not going to touch. You can't touch it. But just a thought. Right. Just a thought. That's all. I'm, I'm not. Thank you. Other comments? Great. Anyone from the public in the audience who would like to be able to uh, address the council on any of the issues we've talked about this evening, please feel free to approach the podium. Uh, Paul Johnson, 78 Mitchell Road. The question would be, so if we... A scenario, let's, let's pretend we're 10 years down the road and there's a capital improvement project that needs to be done at Dunstan Corner, so traffic, what have you, and we go to pay for said project, but there's a shortfall in the general fund because some of the TIF money is sheltered. So how do we reconcile that something geographically might be, need to be done outside the TIF project? Or the TIF district, because district, my understanding is we can only spend the money in the TIF district, correct? So, is that correct? Not quite, but okay. But it's, it's largely, in, in a practical sense, often the case. Right, because otherwise we'd have to justify yeah. why we'd be spending at Dunstan Corner. Yeah. Correct. So, exactly. so we'd have to say, oh, the downs are so big that we have traffic in Dunstan Corner. Right. So if we assume that we can't justify that, because I think that's a reasonable, that could happen. So... I guess one of the fears would be, okay, if there's a project that's needed in the other side of town, so to speak, and we can't justify using TIF money for it, then all of a sudden, are we going to be stuck in this position where we have to bond out money because the general fund might not have the funding that would be there, so to speak, to spend on that capital project in Dunstan? Thank you. Do I stay and, up any, here? No. no. Okay. <laughs> yeah, would anyone like to comment? Chris, I guess from my perspective on finance, I think you're going to um, you're going to incur operating costs for the town no matter what. I wouldn't necessarily say that we would we would sacrifice an, a, a project in Dunstan because we don't have because TIF money's going to a TIF. I think the TIF money would help, and if anything, may even help Dunstan because we're paying lower costs for the similar infrastructure development within the TIF. So that might actually free up a little extra capital to invest in Dunstan. That's kind of the way I would approach it, but I could be off. Well, presumably if we've sheltered too much, we could amend at that point. Right. Correct. That's true as well. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. But, on the, but to your question, on the bare bones, the way that finance works is that that project would be funded through a bond. Um, it actually would not, if it's more than $400,000, it would not need to go to the public because the one exemption statutorily is that traffic improvement and road improvements do not need to go to the voters for improvement. It could be done simply with a council vote, but it would be done through debt. Yeah. Alternatively. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Alternatively. So would we, would we be put in the unfortunate position of trying to, to defend that you're taking debt and you wouldn't have to, you wouldn't have the district is what I would, the debt. That's what I'm trying to say. I, and, I, and I think there's so many yeah. judgments that are made in a budget that it wouldn't be, oh, you can't do this because you've got the TIF money over here. Because okay. the flexibility of, uh, in the usage of TIF money is going to be tremendous because there's loads of things we are going to have to spend money on on Route 1 traffic in the years to come. So uh, even in the limited scope that we're advancing now uh, and, and I think every but every every budget item and every line has to kind of stand on its own merits so I wouldn't necessarily think we would be trading one project for another if the infrastructure is necessary there and we determine it's a priority and it's a need we would, we would have a funding we'd, we'd either plan for it accordingly so we could stagger those costs or we would look at other funding mechanisms maybe it's state or, or something to try and share costs with that so I wouldn't I wouldn't I, I couldn't really foresee us in a position where we would be trading one project for another. I think it would be just kind of how, what pot it came out of to pay for. Really. Sure, and I don't think I was, I don't think trading, I guess, would be done. I guess it's more the perception of, oh, we have to fall on this other so to speak, because. Other, others who would like to address the council, please approach the podium. Carol Gautreaux, uh, Jemico Mill Road. 
Um, my comments and uh, questions are uh, evolve around the revenue stream that decisions have to be ma uh, made on. Um, the, as it pertains to the revenue flow back to the town, the 6040, um, am I correct in saying that the light industry is the most opportunity for us relative to revenue back to the town? Talk, talk about the CEA, yeah. the most cost-effective yeah. cost way in which cost to advance and line. increase uh, uh, assess value. Is the yes. best return. Yes. Best return. And would the condos and rentals be second in terms of opportunity for return? I think commercial would be. Office, but I, yeah, you know, office, commercial, close, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, non-residential generally mm -hmm. Uh, is that group, whether it's manufacturing, office. light industrial, high tech, office, uh, office that, that those, entire group that, is that most category is best. More. Which would include condos to some degree, I guess. Oh, no. they, well, you can have business condo, condominiums. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then um, single family homes are, are kind of a deficit to us, uh, $1,500 per home on average. Is that a reasonable number in terms of revenue stream back to the town. What I've heard in meetings mm -hmm. past is that the single family home is kind of a burden to the town. It's not paying its way. Is that correct? It, it in the analysis that we've done, it's the, uh, it's the lowest performing lowest performing property uh, assessed value uh, of all the options you have available. So you. with that option. The, the 60 40, the revenue, the 40%, um, or the 60% coming to the town, the opportunity with a single family home um, becomes more of a burden by comparison to what it is right now. If we have to take 40% of that rem revenue stream and send it back to the I, developer? I would, I would maybe take a little exception to that only because you're, you're, you're getting. Um, a better mix of industrial and commercial as well. So uh, the thought I think is you you blend that and the overall blend, you're more positive on the backside. So you're correct from an individual standpoint if that was standalone. Yeah, I'm I'm just trying to understand this. I'm not yep. challenging anybody. Yep. It's I'm trying to do an apples and apples. So the yep. single family homes in that district, okay, will be producing less revenue than a comparable single family home in, on Jamaica Mill Road. No, I think they, they not no. less. They'd be comparable. I think it would be comparable. The yeah. same tax Even rate. Forty percent yeah. of that stream is coming. Yes. going back because they they'd be done separately. The the forty percent comes from the total uh, uh, increased assessed uh, tax revenue. The uh, uh, taxes on the house is determined by what its individual assessed value is. Mm -hmm. That wouldn't. But some portion of that assessed value goes back. As goes in the opposite all, direction. As with all the properties. Yes. In that district. Yes, in okay. that district. In that district. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so that is kind of, in my mind, that's kind of a soft spot. Um, so the, the developer will also pay uh, taxes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Does some portion of his tax, the developer's taxes, Go back to the developer. Sounds a little weird, but well, is that is I that? An I see what you're saying. In, in essence, the pr property improvements are made. The property is assessed at an increased value over it was before the improvements were made. The developer or whoever owns that property gets a tax bill, mm -hmm. and they have to pay that tax bill. Uh, and so, that money then goes in, uh, and forty percent of it, if the Developers meeting all the obligations under the credit enhancement agreement, 40% of it goes back to him. So, in essence, it's going out and coming back. Some portion of that goes back to yes. the Yes. Okay. Um, and relative to the project coming off the ground, it is going to take time, five years or whatever. Um, the revenue that does come to the town, is it going to support services and so forth for four or five years? It's going to take a while to, to establish industry, offices, whatever. 
in the meantime, we will have roads out there, we'll have street lights, we'll have et cetera, that has to be maintained for snow plowing and lights going to the street lights and all that stuff. On a very gradual basis over the four year period, is it your vision that the revenue stream will be enough to pay for all the services that have to happen? Yes. It is, it and is. we can see that someplace, that yes. you've already tackled that project. Our analysis suggests that only year one, year one is now. that a challenge, but thereafter, thereafter. it's enough revenue to cover uh, the cost of services. Right. I think, that, I think that's on the public And lastly, what is captured in the infrastructure? In other words, uh, Rocco pointed out he's taking, taking care of all of the inf infrastructure. Where does that, I, I don't know how far the infrastructure goes. I mean, does that include, it doesn't include street lights, probably doesn't include stop lights. What, what, does, in, what does infrastructure include? Um, it includes water, sewer, roads, gas, ro roads. Everything required to service utilities. the development. Mm -hmm. All on the site utilities. And yeah. Okay, all right. And then, uh, Question on, on sheltering. Um, from my perspective, that sounds like a neat idea, if you can shelter money. Um, so I guess what's the downside of sheltering three, five, six percent? You limit its use. Yeah. You limit what it can be used for. Okay. You restrict that. That's the been the subject of the Okay, and then so, but you have to, is that saying you have to define what it's being used for up front? So if you come out of the gate at zero, you have time to you have time to identify what you're going to use it for. Then when you do come up with five percent or three percent or whatever, you can show why what you're using it for, for sheltering. The suggestion is that we get broad authority to use it for certain types of things, and as money um, is created or, or funds are received into that account, they can be used for those qualified purposes. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Thank you for your questions. They were very good. Anyone else wishing to uh, address, please approach the podium. Hi, my name's Don Hamill. I live on Bay Street in Pine Point. Uh, I'd like the chairman to please clarify the schedule for uh, the upcoming hearings, votes, approvals for TIF SAN CEAs and TIF SOAR CEAs. Thanks. Thank, thank you, Don. Uh, yeah, I, uh, it was my intention at the conclusion to just give what I expect to be the uh, uh, balance of the schedule. On November 7th, we have the public hearing. Uh, it's statutorily required. Uh, it's part of a town council meeting. It'll be the day after the election. On November 14th, we're going to have a, a special town council meeting so as to uh, evaluate the public input that we get on November 7th and swear in the new people who have been elected. So <laughs> two, two seats vacated uh, and, uh, and we'll uh, do the swearing in on November 14th. So yes. we'd elect a new chair as well, is that? Yes. For that yes. Okay. yes. Uh, uh, November 21st would be the normal second uh, meeting in the month of November because it's the third Wednesday. It's the day before Thanksgiving. Not a good day to hold a, a town council meeting. So uh, that's going to get moved back to November 28th, at which point we would have uh, a vote uh, up or down on the uh, TIF and credit enhancement agreement. So that's the schedule that we're proposing at the present time. 21st, thank you. Other comments from the public? Seeing none, I think we're ready for a motion to adjourn. It's a workshop, you can just close it. Hmm? It's a workshop, you can just close it, sir. We're all done. We are. We are. <laughs>